This is a Human Collective Podcast. This is episode eight. Hello humans, this is a Human Collective podcast with me, Ross Taylor. For 30 minutes each week, I'll be chatting to my friends in arguably, but not so much arguably anymore, the weirdest industry on planet Earth, TV and film. This week I was joined by RTS Futures chair, content creator and host of his very own comedy podcast, Connor Finn. Now Connor has just finished a stint with Joe in Dublin and has been using the lockdown experience to start his very own podcast, interviews and after his very first episode the podcast was already on the charts making the top 20 irish comedy interview podcast list awesome and now check out his podcast or you can just give him a wee creep on insta uh, but first enjoy a chat where two podcast hosts ball it out for conversational superiority whilst admitting our love for the drink enjoy connor how's it going man good to see you hello sir how's it going <laughs> Very good, I, very good. Is, I mean, this, this is, is a very, very loaded strange. question. This is strange. It's strange. Of course, it's strange. Okay, we both started off. You know what the problem is, Connor? Right? We're both podcast hosts. Okay, so we're both used to fucking hosting this shit. Okay, so now you know, for once in your life, you have to sit back and let me do all the leg work. Okay, that that suits me fine. Yeah, I'll do that. I know. Even there, I tried to answer, and I was like what Who, how am i <laughs> i'm fine i'm fine by the way yeah just in case anybody's worried yeah I'm uh now now connor before um before you started your podcast um and now i'm not just, i'm not saying this is this is this is a few things i mean i heard mutterings and rumors like since i shaved my head i was like the joe rogan of the tv and film <laughs> podcast and and i i don't know like i just heard that i'm not saying it's just something i heard you know what i mean um what are your thoughts on that? Did you hear any mutterings about that? I don't hear them as much anymore since your podcast came out. Um, well, yeah, I suppose um, I did hear mutterings, um, little birds everywhere. But um, considering that I am in the like actual depths of Armagh, like I am so far out of the way that um, anything I do here, it's probably just through smoke signals, really. Um, so uh, it, it may have been lost in translation. Some parts, you know, some people may have picked it up different. Kind of Chinese whisper situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'll take your word for it. Um, Joe, the, the Joe Rogan um, podcast. Yeah, no, me, it's definitely it's definitely a thing. I promise you. Um, so, Connor, how um, how is everything been going with yourself since uh, since lockdown happened? And um, sort of talk me through the origin of your podcast and kind of how it all came together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so everything's been going grand for me during lockdown. Um, I have been one of those bastards. I'm allowed to swear on this, aren't I? Oh, of course, say whatever you want. <sighs> Cunt shit, dick. There you go. <laughs> Thank fuck. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, yeah, so um, kind of I've been one of those people during lockdown where I find myself with a bit of time on my hands. Luckily, still got kept with work, but from working remotely, I kind of went, well, for this, um, there's some things I've always wanted to do, one of them being a podcast. Um, and it kind of took me on, the longest part I think was trying to figure out what I wanted to call it or what the kind of concept around it was because a lot of the times I was chatting to people and they're saying, oh, you could just, you know, make it like really different, make it really weird and that'll be your kind of thing from the podcast. And I just got so disheartened, I think, for... I, I was going to try and make, like, a game show podcast for a while there. And I was just like, Connor, you just want to chat to people. Make it easy for them. Don't make it as complicated. So as soon as I land on that, where I said, that's what podcasts are for. They're for people's conversations and for chats. They don't have to be overly produced or anything. Um, that kind of wound me down a wee bit. And then from there, I was thinking chats, interviews, Finn interviews, because Connor Finn. Um, and then, yeah, kind of took form. And uh, I suppose the main thing that kind of pushed me to get it was um, 
I was like, right, I'm gonna get a proper graphic for it. And then that way I'm investing in this. That's the only investment I actually have in this. Like I still don't have a microphone. I was trying to explain to you earlier. I literally use my iPhone and just do a wee voice record and go, hey guys. Like see for any of the opens of the kind of podcast, if I, this is why I don't record them on video because I sit under a blanket under my bed and I look like, you know, a little hobbit in the bar. Like it's, it's a rough going. So this is actually quite high quality um, for yourself, which, um, I mean, th- that's what I bring to the game. I quality. mean, we're getting that we're getting a bit of a sort of inside peek behind the curtain, uh, if you will. Uh, you know, beh- under pa- the sheet. Yeah, yeah p- past <laughs> past the you know the pr- professional graphics and the awesome you know podcast in itself. We've got a kid under yeah. his blanket, you know, muttering <laughs> softly. Yeah, what, I mean, I've I've been doing it for years. Might as well just record it. So. Um... <laughs> <laughs> love it man well listen i had, had to listen to your to your episode with justine and uh, i really enjoyed it and uh you know it's just I, I would say it's one of those things where you know the the podcast is is you know it's your guests and it's you and it's it's nice that like off the bat you've got someone who you're obviously very um you know if you've got a really relaxing tone and you're you it's a great sense you've got a great sense of humor and i feel like you bring that out of your guests as well and uh you know it was a good it was a good why what's wrong you, you don't like hearing compliments this is something you're not used to <laughs> very unused to but also i'm this is probably the first bit of feedback i've got from it um otherwise um because i think as anybody who does create their own stuff you're probably the exact same you're so critical of it um so hearing that is really nice because I love the podcast, but I almost wasn't going to upload it because I thought I did so many mistakes. Um, one being I didn't really record it properly. And also I got quite drunk on it. Um, if you listen, you can hear me glugging wine and uncapping things. So I don't put that in the description, um, but you have an exclusive here now. So um, I'm glad that it doesn't come across. I'm just like the giggles and stuff. I'm gasping for air. It literally <laughs> is because Justine is such a fantastic, just person in general but she's a direct line to my funny bone that plus alcohol plus nerves meant that the entire podcast i find myself listening back squealing um so but i'm glad it didn't translate as bad as that sorry of course not I, no it's okay <laughs> um, were, you, were you feeling nervous oh god yeah yeah um because it's completely putting yourself out there do you know what i mean like i'm sure you can relate um it's you're i think so many times, uh, things recently as well over the internet, people are kind of held accountable for anything they do say. So part of me was really afraid that I would need to censor myself and I would need to really cut stuff down. And then I thought, oh, those aren't the podcasts I like listen to. But then you still want to be like, oh God, I really can't like disparage someone on this or be like call it for liable. Um, Cause I think there's even a part in it that I had to completely cut out cause I just slated into, um, this pizza chain that I used to work for. And uh, I was so conscious about it um, that I, somebody in this pizza chain corporation would hear about me slagging them off and it would come for me. So yeah, <laughs> uh, was, wasn't was nervous beforehand, but after very much so, so was um, bricking it. Yeah. yeah, man. I just think it's what it, it, you're totally right about it. You know, especially if you're used to being uh, maybe an unfiltered person in general life. You know, um, it's one of those things as well. Like I do, I even felt like moving into TV and stuff. I felt like I did have to kind of refine myself a wee bit for the professional world. And like when you do realize, like, okay, this is a real job. It's a real thing. Of course, I need to like not be like myself on a Saturday night kind of thing. And it's, but it's also like you when you have people on, like you don't want to feel like too, you know um you know what i mean you don't want to feel too podcast you hey how's it going you know you just want to be um, you i yeah i think you're afraid of going too much into like the radio sphere where it's kind of like hello and you're listening to blah blah blah, you know that kind of way but um i just i i it's what you said there about you want to like once you got into tv you wanted to be a bit more professional than just being down at pub thank god you had that filter in your head because I talk about so constantly that I do not have that filter um, in my head as soon as I go in somewhere. I'm like, we're all best friends. We're just going to be working together. This is just like people doing people things. And I think it catches me in so much trouble. I get far, far too familiarized with people far too quickly for my own bad. Um, 
So, uh, yeah. Well, I think I'm, I'm now, a... I mean, now at least we can use that for good. Now, finally, you can put you the yeah. power of, 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 you know, of uh, your personality, you know, for, for your own benefit, you know. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Now, yeah. Um, anything that I do say is I'm completely culpable for. I'm not representing <laughs> anybody other than my own self which is uh i don't know why i'm putting that at less value but uh <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's just the way that's just the way you're sort of made to think you know sometimes oh, when you work in yeah. certain areas um but yeah i mean it was sort of a perfect transition for you and i feel like you know people people who listen to this podcast may not know who you are or what you've done before but um when you say you're busy through lockdown like it hasn't really changed you've been quite busy throughout um throughout your time in tv and around it too um you know if you're not working in tv shows you're, you're doing stuff with rts futures and everything like that you know um tell us a wee bit about your time with rts futures and kind of um i guess if people don't know you give them a wee bit of catch up of what connor finn's been up to yeah, geez, sorry, I, I completely forgot. People actually don't know who I am. <laughs> no, like, yeah, like, no, of course. Like, like that's why I always find funny anybody, like, does come in the podcast. I say, do you want to plug anything? As if they're going to come for me instead of the other person way around. Um, but, no, essentially, um, my name is Connor Finn. Um, I, the way I got into RTS Futures, which is um, Royal Television Society, um, kind of a youth board of it um we uh i was in university um it must have only been about first year up in university ulster called and studying media production and very quickly i realized that so much of trying to get work in the industry was about the experience not your education so i bricked myself and went fuck i have two years left to get myself some experience started applying for random things, literally went in for interviews and they're like, what experience should you have? Uh, which I was thrilled at least to even get an interview for some things. But um, it was like, what experience should you have? And they said, a year university, like literally nothing else. I can make you a good coffee. Which in hindsight, I mean, essential skill right there. Uh, I've, I've, I very much should have plugged that into every interview I've been in. But um, a lot of times they were saying, have you worked on set? Have you done anything like this? And I was going, no, but like, I'd be really good at it. Do you know what I mean? You just, you really want to be in any of those positions. Um, but I found out very quickly that um, that would be a thing that I'd need to build up. So RTA Futures was my way into it. I apply, I, searched, I didn't even know who they were or what they were. Um, they're the oldest um, television society in the world. And um, essentially it's uh, what RTS would do is host a lot of events and workshops around the UK um, and Ireland and I think they might be elsewhere I'm not actually quite sure but uh, for getting people essentially a lot of it is get people into the industry or try to make some things that are very relevant for people that are in the creative industries whether it's TV, film, games, journalism kind of all of those branch site uh, areas but um, yeah I seen a thing on Twitter applied for it um, over a summer because I was like just trying to get things and things weren't working out got accepted to it, um, came in, still not knowing really what it was, so it took me about a couple of months to find out what RTS Futures was while I was actually in it um, and organising things for them, like these workshops. And then, yeah, I kind of, ever since, I kind of worked uh, doing bits and bobs between uni and part-time jobs, um, and I became the vice chair, and then I became the actual chair of the committee and then I was just finishing off university by that time, um, which is geez, only about a year ago now I've graduated. But yeah, I uh, then have came down to Dublin since for another job and just couldn't commit myself to doing that part time in Belfast. But um, yeah, that's kind of it's been it's been probably one of the best things for me um, in terms of work and all I've like yeah. it led it's led me on to everything that since so yeah i mean like you've kind of veer i've always seen you veering towards the presenting side of things as well like you know um you've been no stranger to having a mic in your hand that's for sure um i mean i met you the first time i met you actually i didn't even realize this but it was at the bloody rts awards and you were interviewing people for the rts awards and just i think i don't give you a bloody long-winded answer you were like yeah <laughs> just knew that in 10 seconds mate um, I, I, again similar situation to anything that i didn't like i mean didn't even have like that was my own camera didn't even have any microphone was using my iphone 5s at the time actually so um proper pristine quality <laughs> and 
Also, we, me and my friend that I dragged into it, we didn't even like watch the awards. We got tickets, but then we sat outside just drinking away the wine because we knew that was going to be God afterwards. So when I was interviewing you, I was like, we kind of moved from who would be on the camera between like who was most sober to speak to somebody at the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not a good trait of mine. So I'm seeing a pattern now, Connor, just of this alcoholic abuse that you seem to have throughout your career. <laughs> I, now, that, now that I say it out loud, um, <laughs> but I think it is one of those things, though, in the industry, like, especially for kind of place that we've worked in. And uh, I think people work so hard in the industry that um, when everybody does get, like, even a night to calm down, even though most people are working the next day, like, just even a night off or whatever, I think people are just, like, straight to my veins just like feed me with whatever yeah. alcohol that you have it's a world of extremes um, for sure yeah exactly <laughs> um and i and i talk to it like a duck to water like so um yeah <laughs> so but, here um, so here you're working at joe um and tell me about that experience because it seems to me like you know you've had this really great experience where you can um you know liaise with celebrities and kind of get constant content coming out joe really got their sort of finger on the pulse of those kind of viral videos and things like that tell me about that experience and kind of how that has kind of helped you with you know moving that into the podcast yeah um so i suppose disclaimer by the way um things have moved around quite a lot since lockdown i no longer work for joe unfortunately they're um, lost but exactly exactly <laughs> um but you were drinking but, again weren't you connor that was it i that's that's essentially what yeah this is me again blacklisting myself from every opportunity you're, you're in a rehab can. center now aren't you connor? you're not <laughs> yeah, from yeah. Armagh. <laughs> that's why you can't see daylight right now is because they just they bar the windows up um but no um joe was amazing for the short time that i was there um and yeah, it wasn't like anything I'd ever done before because um, they're technically a digital publishing company rather than anything TV or radio or film or anything. So I land down to it um, about uh, end of October. Um, I seen a job application come up, applied, lucky enough to get an interview and I was already doing bits and bobs for um, a radio company down in Dublin anyways, News Talk. So. I was really lucky one of the days that they wanted me to come in for the interview. I was already down or else I probably wouldn't have been able to come. Um, and yeah, I was lucky enough to get offered it. And I said, grand, had about a week to completely move my life down to Dublin, um, which was stressful enough. Um, but yeah, as soon as I got down there, it was amazing. Um, the offices are tiny, um, but everybody in there is incredibly talented and <clears throat> I said this even when I was kind of leaving as well. I was like, I can't believe you guys allowed me to be in the same room as like this many crazy, you know, experienced, talented people. And uh, even more so um, to let me make these little videos, as you said, liaison with kind of some celebrities and things. Because, uh, yeah, my role in the place was social creative um, or junior social creative. And uh, essentially... I didn't have a specific job description, but more so we they'd have some articles or they'd have some things um, that they would need pushed out on socials because all of their stuff is digital. I would take care of a lot of that stuff, but on the side, they wanted to push, as you said, the Joe kind of brand. Like Joe's very well known for being the voice of Irish people home and abroad is their kind of slogan. Um, so they really encouraged me and the rest of the guys that were in the social creative um, kind of we department about four of us all together um to go make our own things and uh yeah it uh i took full advantage of it um made a wee food series um one of them funny enough my last one um tried out cocktails at about half 10 in the morning filming our kind of responses and stuff and yeah got to kind of do things like late late toy show and um interviewing greg o'shea so th like people sometimes ask like how did I get any of those things literally I would just come with an idea and um, a lot of times it was just a yes or no kind of thing but um, it was complete creative freedom and um, so grateful for them for it so uh, yeah that's that's how a lot of it came around was just me walking in and saying here do you mind if we try this and 
nobody had the sense to say no so <laughs> <laughs> that's great well they obviously give you a sort of platform where you can like really like like the job title and and in, intends in you can be creative and you can you know put ideas out there what what a better there's no better place really to try it out than than joe for sure um it's i guess this kind of leads i usually do another segment before this but i guess it kind of perfectly leads me into it and it is absolutely one of my favorite segments because you know every week i say this is a weird industry and every week people prove me right so um connor without further ado this is weird industry tales <laughs> so connor weird tell me tales. tell me your tell me your weird industry tale please um so my weird industry tale this took quite a lot quite a while for me to kind of figure out what it would be even at the first standoff because I feel like a lot of weird things happen to me, but I don't register they're weird until I tell them to somebody else and then they go, what the fuck? Um, so it probably was down at Joe that this one happened because it's probably one of the most fresh ones at my mind. But um, essentially, uh, late date toy show, I don't know if people have heard about it. If they haven't, shame on you. Um, essentially, RT do this uh, thing called late date show and I do late date toy show over Christmas. And it's iconic, I think. Um, it's part of my culture, um, especially alongside people will kind of, it's just, it's the most chaotic kind of TV show it is for about two hours. These kids come on and they try different things, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, bit of background behind the show. I, uh, we got asked from um, RT, they said, right, we're doing day before press thing at it. Um, you guys are invited, but um, you can come in. You're going to get pictures of the place. We're going to show what the kind of theme is. Um, but use uh, there's an embargo on any of the content. You can't put it up until the day of because it's like it's. I think it's the most televised or the most watched thing in Ireland. Um, so uh, me being there all of about two minutes, uh, put my hands straight up and said, <laughs> Cut "Dibs, I'm going." Um, with no other plans other than I just wanted to nerd out. Um, I found it kind of insane that they allowed me in and essentially all I did was film things off my phone and um, the weirdest experience about it was um, meeting the infamous Ren and Turbidy. Um I <laughs> had about two seconds to give him any questions I wanted to um, and I decided to blow it a little bit. Um, but it, he, he's great though, he's he's uh, he's absolutely amazing. But like I essentially asked him, everybody's asking about like, oh, what's the best toy that played with whatever like this? I thought I'd go, you know, try and like catch him out a wee bit. And I said, what's the worst toy that you've ever had to deal with on this show? And instead he just spun it straight around, like he's so well media trained, but um, he just went around to me saying, well, the best toy that I've ever tried on. So for this show, I was like, I was so caught off guard on how well trained he was that I thought I wanted to document this. I essentially made a video showing how chaotic like this press release was. He was on like this mini ice Zamboni thing that he like drove into like the photographers that were all set up. There's one where he like carries around this child. I essentially put on that like really demonic music and edited it down to put out in Joe and um, they very much went, Connor, love your angle not for us um kind of thing but uh from that day i think it's literally just a surreal experience where i can look back at it and i was like because i remember the whole time that i was filming this i didn't have in my head to make this thing set night um but everything that happened that was going on in this place was just so chaotic he had like this bb gun and he's going like say hello to my little friend like firing these like nerf guns at people and i was like what cracked in is this um it was just insane and then they had children dancing around him and i don't know my mind went to another place but um i think it's hilarious um very strange for me and um yeah i managed to document it and uh if you want to see the full thing it's on my instagram <laughs> i couldn't publish it for absolutely all the right reasons but, Fair enough. yeah absolutely i mean you were drunk again that's connor that's what it was you were just I wasn't even. I sort of. I went. I, I. I feel like it was a fever dream, if anything. Like Jesus. Um. So not very exciting to many other people, but for me, that to stand out like fucking hell. Like I feel like you just lifted up the curtain and you seen the Wizard of Oz and you went, Christ, we'll put it back down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, man, but like it's one of those things as well where you must have like a mic in your hand just pointing it at the prod someone just being like how the hell am i the one holding this microphone like and they're talking and you're like 
Oh my god! Now I've got to have to. I'm gonna to have to say something now. And there's, I always think like when you're. I watched the Greg Jose interview, and I was thinking like I was so high on Love Island, like you know that that's particular series. I was like, oh my god, how did he get there? I suppose everyone was thinking that, but like obviously happy for you. But it was like there must be just a moment where you're like you'd have to either like the the moment might get to you or you just like lean into the whole thing and just like go for it but like what's your thought process like when you're when you're like interviewing a celebrity or somebody and you're in that weird moment um again i over familiarize myself with these people not in terms of like really get to know them and do deep bio search anything like that more so to the fact i think i probably a good thing i kind of humanize everybody a little bit in my terms where like so again, I was in Joe about a week. They sent our email saying, Greg O'Shea is in Dublin. He hasn't done a press thing or anything like this. Would anybody be up for doing anything? Again, I just stuck my hands straight up. Um, couldn't, again, a similar thing. Actually couldn't be put out in Joe because I took too long to edit and stuff. But um, I just thought, oh my God, I'd love to meet this man. Because I was on a similar high after doing that. and um, uh, Or after watching Love Island. And uh, which I usually never do. But funny enough, I watched that season. And uh, yeah, about, I had about half an hour and I decided to make a quiz for him and just because I knew he'd done law. It was for a Just Eat thing. Um, so I thought we'll quiz him on food laws, like really old Irish ones and see if he can get them. Um, but yeah, I think that has set me up for anything that I've done since, um, which I've been so lucky, was lucky as well. Like I, as I've said, all of these are just complete, like I apply for everything and I'm just lucky that something like, you know, catches on me to get like get these opportunities i have no way any authority in any of this but um i think any interviews i do with people that are of kind of that manner or of that kind of like in my head even like how big they are um you just have to talk to them like like as if they're there's somebody on the street that you've never met before because at the end of the day that's all they are and that's all that you have to kind of go off um but yeah sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't that's what i go in with it um and try not to offend them or say anything that is too precarious because again over familiarization i tend to just lean on the weird side as my humor kind of tends to go down that trajectory and um whether it works or not we're finding out <laughs> it's yeah, well, trial and error yeah, yeah i might i might stumble across like a like a viral like 30 million hits of you know guy you know says awkward question to like you know nicholas cage and uh goes horribly wrong but until oh. that day happens you know um all, all's going well so far like <laughs> apparently so yeah 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 like that's that's a lie that i keep feeding to people yeah it's going great yeah like being yeah. like the me and dublin going fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well um um, I think Connor, you're probably um, although ver being very busy, I'm sure you're having your fair share of um, con content uh, digestion um, in, in the sort of weird times that we're having. So um, I'm really interested to hear. And for the title card and this beautiful transition, we're going to go for Connor's lockdown classics. Okay, Connor, now hit me up with your top three shows and from number three. Okay. Top three shows uh, for my lockdown classics. First of all, I want to say TikTok should be on this instead of just shows because that is, um, I spent more time on that than I have around my family and it's disgraceful. Um, but anyways, my top three shows that I have written down, um, had a bit of a corner around this, but I've landed. Number three is on Netflix, it's The, Politi the Politician, Ryan Murphy's um, another series that he's done. Um, loved it simply because um, I absolutely adore it. those kind of like stupidly like micro aggressive melodramas um, but with everything styled so nice nicely and palated re really well um, I think they're such a funny and entertaining thing to watch. Storyline not so great in it um, and the acting's a wee bit pedantic to be honest but I like again I think there's so many crap shows that I watched over lockdown, but that was one of the st standout ones for me that I thought, yeah, this one's a goodie. Perfect. Um, number two was um, Hulu's uh, The Great, starring Elle Fanning and Nicholas Holt. I don't think many people have actually watched this, um, but essentially it's kind of, last year or was it year before, they, there was a um, 
piss tech kind of satirical history movie um the favorite starring um emma stone so mm. it's along the same lines as that where they decided to uh, it's from the people that created the favorite they decide to emulate it but in a tv series but go down the role of catherine the great and uh how she goes into russia and stuff like this so again quite microaggress like microaggressions in this these wee dramas um and they're just a bit quirky and weird and i think that's why i've kind of gravitated to a lot it's just things of a bit escapist that like mm. you know won't happen in real life so um yeah that was my number two and of course number one i don't know if anybody said this in years before i i i'm pretty sure everybody's talked about this but normal people i um it had to be my number one i wasn't even going to put it on the list and then as soon as i said i went what am i talking about binged it in two days um had emotional turmoil for weeks um <laughs> yeah it was uh it was honestly just brilliant like I, there's nothing else everybody's already said what i could say about it like i mean it speaks for itself the, yeah and one actual variety. thing i just discovered recently that bloody paul mascal is like an, a lo- he's a lovely singer he's got a great voice have you heard him sing oh, i swear to god like i mean it's annoying how like <laughs> well like decent human being like you know great singer great actor um I'm just so happy for him, but geez, he doesn't leave it easy for any of the other guys in Ireland, like does no. he at all? <laughs> um, but yeah, I know. And even I thought Daisy Edgar Jones, even her like Irish accent, I like I did not know until I heard her in other interviews. I was like, are you kidding me? Sure, he's from Maynooth as well, like south from Dublin. And yeah. um, they were doing like these Sligo accents and uh, oh, just everything. And I was just like, for people that are relatively unknown in the industry, to get that such spike like and people being like well done that was good like just it's i think there's one of those ones that you're you know it's synonymous or is that a word yeah synonymous it is a uh, word it is a word lockdown yeah here we are connor two podcaster alcoholics trying to do what we can to be successful and bloody (laughs) paul mescal is singing with dermot kennedy like what do we have to do here a duet what what is it i don't know can I do, I might just have to try and call him up and do an interview about like I don't know like laws acting laws I, uh, yeah I don't, I don't know yeah I'm gonna pull, pull out nowhere I'll ask him about the Ballyhonest ad that he did with Danny that that'll oh, be yeah. like my fun twist of him since I got Greg O'Shea I mean yeah. the next step up has to be Paul I mean yeah. you have what you have to do is you have to unearth like the dark crevices of his acting career and find out if he did like a school play and it's on video or something and just really make him feel shit about himself just for one moment you know oh yeah yeah I gotta like you know take him down a couple of pegs yeah and yeah. then and then hit, and then of course just receive it hate from everybody else in the world but worth it yeah <laughs> it'd be great i know i think what you should do really because i think he, the, the writing was also so great in normal people what we, we we should really do is we should kind of um almost like a sting operation you get him on a on a one-on-one kind of video call record the screen so technically you're filming a film and you should write <laughs> rewrite a, a scene in normal people in just the way that you'd like it to be present mm. him with the script and then he can't hide from the writing it's all acting from there on it's, and it's it's never going to work I, for him that way <laughs> i don't right, know why i'm so bitter right but to, right down my alley manipulation you know <laughs> shadow and mirrors um it, it fits Perfect. my it fits my scheme of thing um yeah so why not paul yeah, let's do it, um <laughs> don't don't take hate of this this is this, this is just all for show it's yeah show. maybe it's, it's not normal happen. people maybe it's like kind of dead on people or something like that you know just kind of <laughs> yeah. give it a bit of a tweak to it you know <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah just you wait honestly oh you know what it's, it's i'm it's not being copyright i'm just writing it down now yeah <laughs> good luck um so here the last thing just to close out the podcast um tell me you know I want this podcast to be to be constructive in a way. I want people to come away with an episode and feeling like you know they can t- take something from my guests. And uh, I do think you've kind of had a lot of experiences in certain areas that you know it's a little bit different. It's not quite like the the trajectory that everyone would have if they're looking to be a producer or things like that. So I find yours is, is a little bit different than others. So what kind of resources or kind of advice might you have for for any of the listeners on the podcast? Um. 
God, I, just when you said there about um, me being able to offer some advice, why would you invite me onto this for fucking advice? <laughs> it was like, a mistake, geez, Connor, advice. but let's it clean was, this up. Yeah, <laughs> a grave mistake. Um, no, uh, the reason I think that my trajectory has been so strange in this is, as I kind of said, I kind of apply for everything. I chance my arm um, at whatever kind of goes and see how far I can get. So I've actually figured this out the other day. I've worked in every single format now in me like i'm pretty sure every single format now i've worked in all genres of tv i've worked in film i've worked in radio and now digital so i mean employers out there <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> um, but um no my piece of advice is literally i still feel like i'm not sure what i want to do until i got to show and then i said great i was given an opportunity to create things shoot film present and i said this entirely what i wanted to do I feel like a lot of times people get pigeonholed because it's like if you want to be a producer you gotta do maybe runner researcher that kind of trajectory upwards which i have kind of worked in but i know it's not my strength i think i'm all right at it but i know i don't have a passion in it um but yeah i think the best way to find out as i still kind of am is to and i've taken it from um a friend that kind of initially kind of introduced me into this world of media but literally just apply for everything um be grateful for everything that you get because it is such a tough thing to get started out in um and then also you realize that no matter even what industry i think this just like applies for any kind of job be dead on people will want to work with you if you're a good person and if you are reciprocal to them and you treat them normally there's I think there's no other kind of well no this industry especially there I think there can be sometimes a tendency for some people if they get a bit well known luckily I've never really encountered it but I feel like it does exist where they get a bit well known or if they start to you know build up to a stage where um they are have been notoriety around them they can have a bit of a head on them and I think because everybody is so well linked in this industry it's all about networking it's all about meeting people word travels and I think as long as you stay humble and here's me being like staying humble like I'm the worst <laughs> sport like you can't like you can't get my head out of a room like it doesn't fit through the door um but I feel like I also slag myself enough to, to allow it, Balance but, um, it yeah. Out, yeah yeah but stay humble be a bit of crack and um yeah chat your arm because again as I said I've like all of these things that I've gotten into it's been literally just by me applying for things that other people have said oh I wouldn't apply for that and I have and now I can do those other things but um class man yeah. I think you know um certainly um, an example of someone who just throws himself into everything head first and if you don't like uh wine or coffee by now guys um start drinking it and eventually it'll come back to you in a good way i think <laughs> yeah yeah it'll, it'll come back one way or another yeah <laughs> <laughs> so connor um now we're about to wrap up the podcast but where would people want to find for interviews if they want to listen to it okay um first time i've had to plug um, <laughs> Ooh, it's a big thanks. deal yeah <laughs> thanks so much um yeah so if you want to find finfuse um i am on all listening platforms essentially um but on socials you can find me on interviews podcast um on instagram or on twitter it's interviews pod um and then again if you want to even find me it's connor finn 98 everything's kind of linked in a way um if you find one you'll find the other and uh yeah but if you want to follow, very much appreciate it. And you can hear me do what I do best and chat shit. Have a creep, guys. <laughs> Have a creep, Connor Finn, and you'll f the yeah. podcast will find you. Um, Connor, <laughs> oh, it's been a it's been a pleasure having you uh, on the podcast today, man. Take it easy and uh, so all the best for the podcast. Same with yourself. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, <laughs> cheers, man. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Human Collective Podcast. Remember, like and subscribe our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify for all future podcasts. This is the Human Collective. You know it.